Sometimes they say they're lucky because they get driven around all day by a chauffeur and they don't have to work and they just do shopping all day, right? Yeah. So again, we just have to say it's different, it's a different type of culture, right? But they don't usually have women in the high position in uh, Saudi Arabia. So the question is then, you're a Korean company and you're doing business in Saudi Arabia. Is there any problem to send a woman there? What do you think? No problem? Why not? Why not? Why should why wouldn't they send a woman to Saudi Arabia to do business? Because most of businessmen are men mm -hmm. and they are kind of conservative. Yes. Okay, I understand that point. Does anybody think it's okay to send a woman to Saudi Arabia? <coughs> so anyway, in Saudi Arabia, they understand that they should understand that's their culture, right? But they also respect the foreign culture. That they understand in the foreign culture, the women can have are in the higher position. So they should be okay with dealing with the woman from the foreign country, okay? That comes to their country. So it shouldn't be a big issue. We should be able to send a woman to Saudi Arabia. Right? Saudi Arabians understand that in the US or in Korea, the women can, are working in the high position, so they, they can deal with that situation. Okay? So we can see here, South Korea has a lot of improvement to make on the corporate board seats held by women. Maybe this is also related to Korea and Japan to the long working hours. So if we, women have family or children, uh, there's a high percentage of dropout in Korea and Japan, right? So perhaps the law can be improved. So I saw in Korea they made a law that the woman is pregnant now, she can go home earlier than the other workers, right? They made that kind of a law last week, last week, last year. So we can see more improvement there. Norway has a law. Usually Norway and Sweden are top of these things, like way ahead of the other countries, which is you know around 10%, but Norway is up around 40%. So Norway made a law that 40% of the women on the board, 40% of the people on the board have to be women. That's like a quota system. You understand quota system? Quota means you have to have this much women on the board. Okay? So in Ireland also they use some quota systems. Ireland is here 9.5%. Uh, the government that was recently elected said that the cabinet, which is the top 12 ministers, that 40% of them will be women, at least 40% if they were elected. Okay? So we can work with the kind of the quota system and just put different processes in place in the company to make sure that uh, women can get the equal opportunity. Then we have to understand about the corruption in different countries. So 
We were studying the business ethics. Uh, we talked about that. Uh, we have uh, the website of Transparency International. We have here on the slide uh, some details. They also have the website. So they make corruption perceptions index. What they do is they go around to the countries and they ask them, what do you think about corruption in your country? Is there much corruption? Do you have to pay money to the government to get a contract? Right? If you want to get a job, do you have to pay a bribe? So it's just based on questionnaires with people who do business in the country or in the government. And they give the country a score then. So again, we can see often the Nordic countries like Denmark and Sweden and Norway always score highly on most things, right? So they're also lower corruption. Then down here we have Somalia, Afghanistan, Sudan, right? They have very low scores. They have high corruption. So, of course, what do you think? If we're in a country like, let's just choose the bottom one, Somalia, and we're doing business, we're working for, let's say, Samsung, and we want to do business in Somalia, they want us to make some energy, right? Energy solution. And they have tender process. Do you understand tender? Tender means that companies can compete to, companies can compete to get the contract, okay? And then the, the government minister from Somalia asks you, you know what, if you put this money into my personal account, then I think we can do business. What do you think? What should you do? Is that just the way that things are done in Somalia? That's just Somalia's culture? So it's okay to pay the bribe if you want to get the business? Or not? What do you think? Hands up, who's going to pay the money into their account to get the big contract for your company? Who's not going to pay the money into the account? Right? Okay, so anyway, for this kind of thing, even though it's culture in another country, it's illegal. So we shouldn't do it. It doesn't matter. Okay? And we may probably get caught in the long term. Okay, so an example is Siemens paid a bribe in China. Siemens, but the guy who paid the bribe got caught and put in jail, eventually. Okay, do you understand? Back in, his, back in Germany. Okay, lost his job and was disgraced and went to jail. So we shouldn't do that kind of illegal activity. Even though it's the, maybe the culture, maybe we'll lose the contract. Maybe we'll lose the contract to the other company who paid the bribe. Right? But anyway, we shouldn't do that kind of illegal activity. Just anyway, we can be aware. Different countries have different levels of corruption. Okay? So, different countries also have different ideas of what is corruption. Under Marxism, some Marxist or communist countries, they think profits are corruption. In Japan, think individualism is kind of corruption. In India, just consumerism. In China, they ban the foreign missionaries. They don't let the missionaries into the country. Intellectual property laws in Africa. Currency speculation in Asia. They have so different countries have different ideas of what kind of things constitute corruption. For example, we have. Uh, do you know Barbie? Yes. Do you have any? Barbie doll? No? Okay. Do you guys have Barbie dolls? Did you ever buy a Barbie doll? Yes? What kind of Barbie doll did you buy? Blonde hair and blue eyes? Barbie doll? Why didn't you buy the Disney princesses? Disney has some Asian princess. Why didn't you buy the Disney Asian princess? I can't remember the name because I'm not a big fan. <laughs> I'm not a kid, right? Why did you buy the blonde hair and blue eyed Barbie? No reason? It seemed more beautiful to you? I 
So, uh, Mattel, they just sell the Barbie. It's standardized. Right? We talked about standardized before. They sell the same Barbie with the unrealistic figure, right? The legs is longer than the rest of the body. The legs is two times longer than the rest of the body, right? So, uh, some parents and governments reacted to this because they think they shouldn't be selling this kind of unrealistic doll and just one there and blue eyes, right? But Disney started to sell. Disney has a lot of different princesses from different areas of the world, like a native Indian princess from the US, right? Who is a fan of Disney here? Are you a big fan of Disney? No. Don't know all the characters? Pocahontas, is that the name? Do you know Pocahontas? Yes. They have some. Aladdin, do you know Aladdin? Aladdin has some princess, right? Mulan, they have a lot of different princesses. So, actually, Disney did better because when they released their princesses, they sold better around the world, like we talked about before, right? Maybe some customization. So, some countries like India, the government even was angry that they saw this as kind of corruption in a way that Barbie is selling just this kind of doll. Uh, so there's a Western focus on bribery. So the decision to pay a bribe creates a major conflict between what is ethical and correct and what is profitable and necessary for business. So just like we gave the question, it can be more profitable if you pay the bribe in the short term. Right? But it's not the right thing to do and it's not ethical. So the OECD and Transparency International are trying to stop or cut down this kind of bribery. China, for example, their next five year plan, cutting down corruption is one of their biggest issues, right? In China, to reduce the corruption. They already convicted some very high level figures who are involved in corruption, yes? Uh, I have a question. Uh, what is the difference between uh, bribery and lobby? Uh, it may be a language difference in Korea in that it, lobby could be Konglish. Do you understand Konglish? Konglish is when you take an English word and it has a different meaning in Korea. But lobby's real meaning in English means uh, like there are a lot of lobbying organizations in Washington. They just try to contact the politicians Right? And tell the politicians their point of view. Right? Meet with the politicians, organize a meeting, and just talk, talk to them and convince them. But not paying any money or giving any gifts. Just talking to them and trying to tell them their point of view, point of view of their company. That's lobbying in English. <coughs> Bribery is giving them money and that kind of thing. Mm, to do your something for you. Lubrication is just giving them some small gift or small things. So it's hard to know where to draw the line. For example, in Europe, it seems to be acceptable to take people to sports events, right? Invite you to the sports events, doesn't really seem to be bribery, or just maybe invite you for dinner or lunch, okay? That could be called just kind of lubrication. But uh, giving a very small gift, you know, just worth $5 or $10. But Giving really big gifts or giving money, large sums of money. We can see with a lot of scandals these days with FIFA, you know FIFA, the president of FIFA, the president of Brazil is in trouble these days, accused of taking kickbacks, right? Ex president of Brazil, also accused of those things. So hopefully it's improving, especially as the education is growing. Uh, it should be improving. A little bit ironic because one of the presidents of Brazil introduced a program where the parents of the children get paid for sending the children to school. And only the mothers, not the father. So if you send your child to school, you get 30 US dollars or 40 US dollars every month from the government if your child is going to school. They bought that program in, in Brazil. So it was quite a famous program help to increase the attendance at school for the kids and improve the education, right? But now those kids are graduating, and maybe because they have better education, they can recognize the corruption in Brazil. So now the same president that brought in that program is in trouble. 
right? All the kids got the education, and now they found out, hey, you were corrupt. Thanks for the education, dog. <laughs> nice plan, but you're going to jail. Right? Because we're smart now. We can see that what you were doing all the time. Right? But thanks again for the money. For the school, right? That was very helpful. So a little bit ironic. But as the people's education level increases, then we should, there's a direct line between corruption and education, right? If you look at the, some of the countries, it's not a direct line, but more or less, right? Countries with the higher educational ability usually is in lower corruption, right? So one of the big problems for poorer countries is that they have this kind of corruption, from, but the people don't really recognize what's happening. For example, I lived in South America, in Ecuador, and they have a lot of oil in Ecuador. So the people who work for the oil company and the top families in the country, they get a lot of money. For example, in one year, the person in the oil company got a bonus of just $10,000, right? But the other people, some other people was really poor, didn't have anything. But they didn't really understand. The poor people didn't have much education, so they didn't really understand the inequality in their country or the corruption. So they they need to get the education in order to change that. So Brazil, a little bit similar to Ecuador, that situation. The corruption in Brazil is all about Petrobras, which is the big oil company in Brazil. So <clears throat> anyway, every country has different corruption, so we have to understand about that. So here's some definitions. Bribery is voluntary offered payment by somebody seeking unlawful advantage. This is illegal. Extortion is uh, extortion is I have some information about you, and I force you to do something. <clears throat> Subordination and lubrication is a small amount, a gift or a service, that kind of thing. Agents fee is very uh, unclear. Sometimes companies they understand that maybe we need to pay a bribe in this country. So what they do is they go and they hire an agent from that country, right? And then they pay the agent, the agent's fee. And then they say, oh, we don't know what the agent is doing, right? And later, if the agent gets caught doing a bribe, the company will say, oh, we didn't know that. We didn't know he was going to do a bribe, right? And they really didn't know he was going to do a bribe, okay? So some companies use an agent in that way, but we can also just hire an agent properly or to represent the company in that country because they understand about the law, the regulations and the culture. <clears throat> so one way that we can deal with corruption is make sure that the businesses, uh, companies act in a more proper way. Right? Maybe some countries their legal system is not strong for that reason they don't catch the corruption. Right. But we can start to look more at the home country penalizing the company. So even companies like Swedish companies were caught paying bribes in Uzbekistan, right? Maybe they get away with that because in Uzbekistan they don't get convicted or taken to court or prison, right? But we have to try and make more pressure on them in their home country. So we have this kind of Foreign Corrupt Practices Act coming in. And it's said that since 1994, US businesses have bowed out of 294 major overseas commercial contracts valued at 145 billion, rather than paying bribes. So many companies also refuse to pay bribes. So uh, we can also have these kinds of difficulties in other countries, because every country has different law. We don't have global law, right? Sometimes we have global agreements, but countries don't like to give up their sovereignty. Do you understand sovereignty? Sovereignty is uh, power, like power, right? So countries want to have their own power, is they have their own sovereignty. So if we give away our power to an international organization, we lose our sovereignty, 
and we lose our power. So con countries don't like to do that. But we have examples where they do do that, like the WTO. Do you know the WTO? World Trade Organization. So we give away some of our power. It means that uh, if we make a mistake, we can be punished by the WTO. Okay? They can put tariffs on us. So we have to follow what the WTO says about trade. So we gave up a little bit of our power in that case. Uh, <clears throat> some countries, you know, don't really keep basic human rights, like people's freedom to demonstrate, or freedom of speech, okay? or providing shelter and food and clothes for everybody. Uh, but companies shouldn't take advantage of that, right? For example, in some countries, it may be okay for people under the age of 16 to work, or 14 even, to work. But our company, even though that country has that law, our company shouldn't take advantage of that law. Right? Uh, environmental protection the same. Some countries can have a very low laws about the environment. But our company should still keep the, do the things correctly or properly. Okay? Even though there is different laws in, in, other, in different countries. So, uh, laws is like rules set down and markers of past behavior. But we also have ethics. Ethics which goes further than law. Okay, which is really doing the correct thing, doing the right thing or doing the wrong thing. Okay, so we have to distinguish between what's right to do and what's wrong to do. So we have some main groups of ethics. Utilitarian ethics, does it achieve a common good? Rights of the parties, are we breaking any rights of the people? And fairness, is our action fair? Are we doing something fairly? So different people have different ways of using their ethics, right? But if I look at bribery, it's not fair, right? Bribery is not fair, so it's the wrong thing to do, okay? Ethically, even if I can get away with it legally. Then I'm breaking the rights, the competition, other companies have the right of fair competition. So I'm breaking their rights. So according to rights-based ethics, it's also wrong, okay? Utilitarian ethics, it's also wrong, because uh, the best company should get the contract, okay? It's like capitalism, okay? Do you know creative destruction? Creative destruction is a very important point of capitalism. Somebody better comes along with a better technology and a better company, right? Then the society is improved. But if we're paying bribes, and I get the business because I paid the bribe, but my company is worse than the other company, it's not good for society, okay? It's not good for advancing society. So, on all of these ethics, uh, we have to think ethically as well, okay? So, we have two main types of culture in the world. We can uh, break up very generally. Every country has different culture, but we can make them as information-oriented culture or relationship-oriented culture. Okay? Information-oriented, low context, individualism, low power distance, <coughs> low bribery, usually using English language. Okay? Very direct way of speaking to each other. Right? Just communicate with words and very directly. Monochronic time. Okay? Very most used on the internet. They like competition. Relationship-oriented culture. High context. Collectivism. High power distance. Bribery more common. High distance from English. Indirect style of communication. They like face-to-face -face, uh, communication. Uh, and they like making the relationship with the other people. And harmony. So. Uh, then let's uh, look at these questions. So today we just have three foreign students. So we're just going to discuss about culture shocks. So maybe, uh, Honest, can you sit over here? 
then uh, Factran, you can sit here next to these guys, right? And you can just talk with those guys, right? Then have, have you guys traveled abroad before? Have you lived in another country? Have you lived in another country? No? So hands up the students who lived in another country. We're talking about culture shock. You guys, right? Uh, so, can you swap places with her? Can you swap places? Okay. Can, can you swap places with him? Okay. So we should have at least one person that we sitting around us, either in the two or three, that we can talk to about culture shock. Do you understand culture shock? Yeah. yeah. So discuss with the student about culture shock. What was their culture shock when they went to another country? What was their culture shock experience? Very different. <laughs> I came to Korea. No, there is, but I just can't remember. Uh, <laughs> Tell me what you think that shock. What you think shock? I think I'm from Korean culture because I come from Africa, right? So I can what do you think shock shock? I came to the and the thing is, Koreans walk really fast, like, walk really fast. Mm. Like, you so fast. That, that was shocking to me. Because South Africa, we all slow, you know. We don't, we're not in a rush. You guys are always in a rush. Like, yeah, yeah, you guys are always rushing. When I came to Korea, Koreans are always in a rush. The thing is, when I walk past by people, then they, they just look at me like, you know. I when I when I walk past like a group of Koreans, and then they just look at me. But they, they 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 look at me when I'm not looking at them. So maybe I I walk past them, and then and then I turn around, and then they see me. And then I see them looking at me, then they look at me. And then, yeah, that's how they do. Okay, so you can sit back in your place again. Yeah. <laughs> so, let's start with the foreign students in Korea. So, foreign students, three foreign students. What was your culture shock when you came to Korea? There's three foreign students here today. So, can you tell us your culture shocks? <laughs> Korea, yes. 
way of using chopsticks because they they start they don't learn how to do it properly and then they can't change later it doesn't feel comfortable <laughs> so if you're not using chopsticks yet I advise to learn to use chopsticks properly from the start because if you start with your own way then it's hard you can't change afterwards I tried <laughs> okay. next one well, it's not really that culture, so you just see Asians doing everything, you know, from being taxi drivers, sweeping the streets, and everything like that. So you mean just the fact there's not many foreigners, you can't see many other foreigners around the place? Yeah, so that was just shocked. Okay. Uh, yes. Korea, Japan, Thailand, Korea and Japan don't have very much high inward migration compared to other countries. Right? Uh, then what about in Canada? Green students who went to Canada. What was your culture shock? <coughs> um, uh, homosexual love is very uh, common. Mm. They they did skinship on the public street or mm. somewhere, and they get off work uh, at three or four p.m. Yes. I noticed both of those things when I was in Canada. Okay. Uh, when I worked there, I used to finish at half past three. It was very nice. Yeah, half past seven until half past three. So we could go, there was some lake in Toronto. We used to go to the beach after work. The lake, quite nice. So, and then what about Australia? Um, yeah, I was I was working in a restaurant, and uh, everyone in the restaurant is called boss's name, and making laugh on him, like make a joke with him. He was like pretty shocked because in Korea I never call boss's name because it's boss or some other titles. Mm -hmm. And you don't make fun of the boss in Korea. Yeah. And you treat with more respect. Yeah. What about in the USA? Students who went to the USA. Hmm? What was the culture shock there? Uh, first of all, Mariana was hmm? uh, What state were you in? Huh? What's, it depends on the state. What state uh, were you in? It depends on the state, but uh, in Washington. Mm. State, uh, okay. was Don't worry, I'm not going to ask if you try. <laughs> <laughs> uh, second is um, people act slowly than Korean. Okay. Mm. Uh, people, um, people can't drink alcohol in the street. Uh, it's 
So uh, we should be able to adapt. Uh, we get when we go to the country first, we we get some shock maybe from the different culture, right? But we have to try and be flexible and adapt to the other culture. Uh, so learn to use the chopsticks, right? And learn to do things at a slower pace, right? And make fun of your boss, right? Or uh, get off work earlier, or don't be shocked or angry about seeing some homosexual or that kind of thing, right? Uh, doing on the streets. Uh, it's different than maybe than your country, but we have to adapt and be flexible in the foreign culture, okay? So, uh, then let's look at the next question. Describe some different types of bribery. Would you accept a payment to allow one customer to have a faster delivery at the cost of another? So a customer says, you know, can you speed up the delivery, right? And you say, well, I, I have to deliver to this person first. And they say, well, I'll tell you what, I'll pay you more money if you make my delivery faster than the other person. Okay? So what are you going to do? We'll discuss with your partner. Different <laughs> 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 to you personal account, not to the company. It's okay. If we keep the secret, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not okay. It's illegal. Right? So you should. <laughs> I think we need to study again, right? <laughs> Go back and study again. <laughs> Bribery is illegal, right? Yeah. <laughs> bribery is unlawful. Unlawful advantage is bribery. Okay, so we shouldn't do that. <laughs> you want to change your answer? <laughs> you want to change your answer? Now that I told you it's unlawful, it's illegal. Mm. <laughs>